Stay tuned for another lesson of Sanko by ICL. And don't forget to watch your hands. Hi everyone, welcome back. Missing teacher here, and today we're going to talk about prevention. So today I have a pamphlet on inhalants. I figured this would be good to talk about because you know we're all at home bored. We're trying to find things to do to pass the time or keep us busy when we're not engaged in schoolwork or time with our families. But one thing we don't want to do is start getting into trouble by messing with things like household products, cleaning products, things we use on our body things we use outside. We want to make sure we're safe with the things that we use and we know how to use them properly. So here's a quick intro video if you don't know anything about inhalants. This is Drug Minute Inhalants. Hi, my name is Young Marine Staff Sergeant Webb and today's Drug Minute is about inhalants. Inhalants are substances that are sniffed or have to get high. Some of the products that are sniffed to get the feel of a high are solvents, also known as household products, aerosols, gases, or fumes. Inhalants have many of the usual effects of other drugs, such as slurred speech, lack of coordination, euphoria, and dizziness. However, people often feel lightheaded and have hallucinations as well. Inhalants often cause liver and kidney damage, loss of hearing, limb spasms, and lack of sleep. Huffing many of the solvents or aerosol products can cause what's called as sudden sniffing death, which is when the heart stops beating due to an overdose. A few of the street names for inhalants are air blasters, bullet, bolt, snot balls, poppers, and dusting. Some of the withdrawal effects are nausea, loss of appetite, loss of sleep, and excessive sweating. Thank you for joining me on today's Drug Minute. All right, so you guys got a quick minute, um, a little bit about inhalants. I'm not going to describe everything that can be used as an inhalant because I definitely don't want to give you guys any ideas. But basically, if it has any type of warning label on it, if it's something you wouldn't normally use, don't play with it. It's not a toy. And always make sure you have adult permission before you even think about using anything you don't know how to use. So again, inhalants, it refers to vapors from toxic substances, which are inhaled to try to have a different feeling. Because again, you're bored, you might want to get into something, but that's not the thing to get into. So like any type of like cleaning things, we want to make sure we're using those for cleaning only. Make sure you wear a mask. If you do happen to clean, like if your parents tell you to go clean, use um, the Lysol spray. Make sure you use some type of face covering. Make sure you have ventilation. Make sure that a door is open because things like that, they can hurt your head. So again, it slows you down. You don't want to be slowed down, especially now. You want to make sure you're healthy. You want to make sure you're up, active, and moving. All right, so again, there's different names for the things they call inhalants. So if you hear a funny name, it's probably not as funny as you think it is. Like one of them is like snot balls, which of course, when we think about like snot and stuff, a lot of kids think it's funny. But again, it's really not something that you want to use. Um, air blast, like that sounds like a cool name. But if somebody says something about air blast, don't even think about getting into it. Let's see, snappers. Unless it's food, it's not a funny name. Let's see, poppers, bolt. Like, again, these are names that you might hear. Like, oh, someone says, oh, you want to do bolt? No. Unless you're talking about running, no. We do not want to do bolt. Pearls. So, again, if you're talking to your friends online and they're like, oh, do you want to do this or that? You'll say no, because I know that's just a street name for something that could possibly injure or harm me, and I do not want to do it. So, um, a lot of teenagers, you know, those are the easily influenced. So, some other things that inhalants can hurt it can hurt your heart, hurt your kidneys, your brain, your liver, your bone marrow, which is just the density of your bones and other organs. And we need those, especially now, to stay healthy so we can function the way we're supposed to function. 
again, like I said in the video, you can have nausea, nosebleeds, lose your sense of hearing or smell, which what fun would it be to eat if we can't even smell our food or taste it the way we're supposed to? Um, muscle wasting, so you'll have reduced muscle tone. I know the younger guys you guys want to show your muscles and flex them to impress your friends or whoever. Uh, you can't do that if you're messing with household products and things that are supposed to be used for other purposes if you're playing around with them. All right, so there are some short-term effects. So if you, like I said, if you're cleaning and you start to feel dizzy, that's when you immediately need to tell an adult, um, try to get some fresh air. Uh, don't sit down or be lazy. Just um, try to keep yourself moving. Try to get over it. If you have a headache after cleaning something, that's, again, make sure you tell an adult so they can give you the proper care. Let's see. If you start having any like hallucinations, that's when you start seeing things that aren't really there. Like if I'm staring out and I see a dog, for example, that's not there, that's a hallucination. Any type of rashes after you use a product. Again, most of the time on the back of different products, it'll say like if you have if it touches your skin, wash it off immediately. And you might not know that it's on your skin. So you're sitting up here itching and you don't know, you had gloves on and everything. And you're like, why am I itching? Oh, maybe a piece of a little droplet of the product got on you. And that's why you're breaking out. So again, try to keep track of what you're using. And then again, tell an adult immediately if you start to have any rashes or itching, any bumps. Lack of coordination. So that's when you're not yourself, you're not balanced. You want to make sure that you get control of that immediately. If you start to feel sad, or any type of just a weird feeling after you're using any type of cleaning or household product. Again, that's not normal. Make sure you tell someone. Hearing loss. We all like to hear, especially music or if somebody's telling a joke. That's something you definitely want to hear. So if you're having any type of hearing problems after you use something, make sure you tell someone. I think I went over all the basic stuff. So are inhalants addictive? Yes, they can be physically and psychologically addictive. So when you're using something like sugar, when you keep eating sugar and eating sugar and eating sugar, your body wants it more and more. When you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing, sometimes your body will want it more and more. So we want to make sure that we're using things for the reason that's supposed to be used for, again. Now, sweating, excessive sweating is another symptom I meant to tell you guys, so... Yes, it's good when you're working out if you're trying to lose weight, but if you're cleaning and then later on you have excessive sweating, that's not a good sign. So international statistics. Again, this book is a little older. This kind of came out when I was in school. So they're using some of these same materials and updating them as we go on. So a U.S. survey combining data from 2002 to 2006 found that annual average of Almost 600,000 teens aged 12 to 17 have used inhalants for the first time um, when they took this survey. More than 22.9 million Americans have experimented with inhalants at some point in their lives. Um, about 4,000 emergency room visits are due to people using inhalants. Even in other countries, people are using inhalants or using things for the purpose they're not supposed to be used for. So it's not just a here thing. It's not just a there thing. It's all around the world. Now, here's a fact about glue. Like, again, objects, you, you, things you use to for your crafts, that can also be dangerous if you're not using it properly. Like if you use a hot glue gun, for example, it's going to be hot. You'll get a burn. So we want to make sure we're using things properly and safely. So there are many different types of inhalants. Like I was talking a lot about like cleaning spray, but you also have it in liquids. You also have it in gas and you have it in nitrates. Nitrates are found in your food preservatives like leather and like deodorizers. So like I said, um, things that you use even on your body, like body spray, if you use too much of that, that's not going to be good for you. We want to make sure we're breathing in as much healthy air as possible so we feel like our normal selves. So this is important. Are inhalants legal? Again, these different products that we're using, they are legal, but if you use them the wrong way, 
So that's when you start to get in trouble. You start to, you can get fines. You can have mandatory treatments. Uh, you're not allowed to sell things. And you're not allowed to have a lot of it like in possession. Like if you're trying to be the big glue man in town, you might get in trouble for that. So the final note that I want to leave you with today is this part right here. It says, okay, I can't read it through the screen. I'm going to read it. The real answer is to get the facts and not take drugs in the first place. So anytime you're using any type of cleaning product, body product, craft product, you want to make sure you read the directions, you read the warning label, you read the facts, you have adult supervision or adult permission before you use anything that you're unsure of. That way we can all stay safe and healthy. I hope you guys got some information in today's lesson. I know it was a lot to take in. I know it was kind of scary, but the truth is we're all in the house more than normal. There are different things you might want to get your hands on, maybe mom's makeup, maybe dad's ax spray, but we want to make sure that we are safe when we're using those things. We know exactly what they're used for and we're not playing with it because nothing is more important than feeling like our normal selves. So again, stay safe and stay healthy. See you soon. Welcome to the word of the day. The word of the day today is compliant. Compliant is spelled C-O-M-P-L-I-A-N-T. To be compliant, you are complying or yielding in a submissive way. A compli compliant, using a sentence as an example. A compliant child, Chelsea does everything her mother tells her.